Hello, everybody. Um, uh, thank you for joining us for this uh, important webinar. Um, before we start and uh, introduce uh, everyone, I just want to give some uh, house housekeeping items. So first of all, I apologize. This, this uh, webinar does not have um, subtitles, but we will send a link with subtitles uh, uh, later in the week. Um, we are very eager for everyone to participate. So you have both a Q&A uh, and a chat through which we welcome your, uh, your questions and your comments and your thoughts. Um, before I uh, give uh, the, the floor to Rabbi uh, Sergio Bergman, who will introduce the Whoopji staff, I want to also uh, uh, introduce uh, Barbara Weinstein, who is the director of the Religious Action Center, who's joining us from uh, DC as a representative of the RAC and the URJ. Um, and I am Rabbi Noah Sotat, I'm the director of IRAC. Um, Rabbi Sergio, will you give us the framing and the introduction for the WUPG staff? Sure, thank you, Noah, and really thank you for the IRAC working together with the URJ, the RAC in, in DC, uh, the Israel movement. For us, it's be together in this really difficult time with our people in Belarus. Right now, this webinar gives us the chance to share information and also in this special time of the year that we are coming into a lull for a reflection, meditation, and also time uh, to action. That means that we are only one family extended around the world, that we are only one people, and that we are uh, together. Uh, like we teach that Kol Israel Arevim Zeba said, this opportunity is to show up how we are one. And for me, really, it's important to put in context the, the, the long way of our community in Belarus, the work that we start by the strong and important leadership from Rabbi Dick Hirsch that put the progressive Judaism into the FSU, and especially here in Belarus, working all together. And let me introduce Rita that is our director of FSU to introduce our work there, and especially our Rabbi Minsk, our dear Grisha Abramovich. Rita, please. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Rabbi uh, Sergio Bergman, and thank you for everybody who is uh, uh, attending this uh, uh, meeting today and uh, especially thank you for IRAC for organizing and uh, inviting us as uh, uh, partners in this uh, very, very important event. Um, I just want to say that for, for us uh, um, to be with our community in Belarus, uh, it's very important. Uh, we are trying to continue our regular life, if we can say in a, a Jewish way of life, uh, but uh, it's uh, understandable that we can't, uh, um, can't ignore all what's happening in the country and really want to support them and want to share our solidarity with them. Um, we are trying to be in touch all the time, trying to talk, trying to, uh, to send messages and to, um, to understand what more can we do together uh, to support our people and our community. Um, the Belarus uh, Jewish reform life is a very interesting, very active life. Uh, we have a great Rabbi that is sitting here and he will speak by himself about what they are doing and how they are doing. Um, for me, here in this stage, it's very important to say that it's our, um, it's our opportunity to share uh, what's going on and to be open for any ideas, how can we help, but in the same way, to be very, very, very careful for those people who are living there and facing uh, uh, all their correspondence and meetings and uh, um, like regular life with the local government. So from my uh, point here, 
I'm living now in Israel, but originally I'm from Belarus. And from my point of uh, personal and professional view, uh, for me, it's very, very important also to care uh, about those people who are working with us, for our staff, for our community members, for our chairs of the community in all the Belarus. And uh, this is uh, a pleasure to give a word to our Rabbi Grisha Abramovich, this Rabbi. Grisha, you're still, yeah, there we go. Uh, thank you very much. It took two more seconds for me to unmute. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for organizing this meeting. Thank you, uh, IRAC, thank you, World Union of Progressive Judaism. Each of you that about to spend hopefully one hour uh, talking about what's going on here, what are reasons of protesters, what, what uh, how, did, how did it start? what a way to help, what would be the right stage and what would be the right word of support. Uh, on behalf of my union of uh, all our 11 connections, I, I appreciate the support that we already have got. And we also would appreciate because uh, this pre-election after election situation did not stop neither yesterday nor today. Uh, I do have some words to share and uh, if, if you're ready, I, I can start, not now, or, or I can do them a bit later. Just know, l let me know what would be our way of discussing. Yeah, I, I, think, I think, why don't you start with sharing um, the, the words that you've prepared, prepared and then uh, either Barbara and I will ask you questions or we'll take questions from the, from the listeners. Excellent, okay. Uh, it's quite rare to see me how I'm reading from the list. I usually speak out of my heart, but making sure that I didn't forget anything, making sure that emotion not beyond my mind. <laughs> uh, again, English is not my native language. So uh, I've written everything and I put in paper. It's not a Rosh Hashanah sermon apparently, but I would love to share uh, as much as uh, certainly must be shared. Um, uh, many of you already asked questions, uh, what were possible reasons for protest in Belarus? Quite peaceful country, uh, green, uh, well, populations like uh, Israel, but I, I'm taking quote of uh, Margarita Fruman, so it's a bit greener. <laughs> and uh, how come we, we've got such a protester? How come we've got uh, such amount of people who were detained? Yeah, and what's going on? Why it's every day in the news? Why it's, why it's presented as a crisis uh, and worries and fear. So I will start from what is written in my paper. A great number of those who are taking part in the process believe that the vote of 10% announced by the election com commission for candidate Svetlana Tikhanovskaya, one of five of candidates, we will go together with uh, President Lukashenko also, uh, uh, altogether five candidates, um, does not co correspond to the reality. So they did not agree with the fact of 10%, knowing that many friends of ours uh, voted for her, supported her. There are also those who are confident in her victory again. At the same time, there are those, and as saying that, that those is not just somewhere there, but my neighbors, members of my community as well. Uh, and there are many of them who voted uh, to the incumbent President Alexander Lukashenko. And they also organized rallies. So you can imagine rallies on both sides, for Tikhanovskaya, for Lukashenko, with different kind of flags. And we uh, experienced previous elections in 2010, were protests in 2015 were protests, but right now, not just we in use every day, but it, it sounds more fear, more, more terrible, more problematic in terms of analyzing what's going on. Yeah. Uh, the recent information about 7,000 people detained as a result of protest against the official result of the election. However, for example, uh, the former uh, leaders of Tamar community, and I'm sure some of you read number of articles about them. Their names, Artur Reisky and Albert Kengerly, 
uh, Albert should be with us and Arthur uh, couldn't do because he's at work not now and, and online work. Uh, were detained the day before election. Not to forget it, it didn't happen in the day of election or protest after that, it was a day before election. Without any reason, they were walking in the middle of city, just walking with no sign of uh, shutting something or standing somewhere in a forbidden place, nothing like that. Uh, a few weeks before the election day, People were detained for queuing up to buy Belarusian symbols at the store called Symbol Buy, Symbol.Buy. Uh, among them, unfortunately, again, a member of my community, and when we spoke about previously, the uh, former chairperson of Tamar community, community for uh, young people. So uh, uh, we also got a Simha community, Sheket community in Minsk, a member of Simha community, Rafik Kengerin. He was in that queue. Uh, at the court trial, and I was there, uh, Rafik, our volunteer, our volunteer who is always ready to help everyone, received a fine of about uh, $50. And frankly speaking, uh, if compared to other court sentences, fines, and we speak about $200, $300, uh, but it's not enough. We, we also speak about days of detention. His brother, Albert, remember I mentioned him? He got a week in jail, just walking. And this is reality. Uh, and you, you have to understand, cr cr we were all crying, so hooray, you've got just $50 fine, so great. Yeah, but it, it, it's not, it, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be anything like that. No jail, no fine for just walking, being somewhere, not being among protesters even. You know. That is a bit problematic for uh, us as peaceful city, as country, and again, as community. We, 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 we don't have yet answers for what actually happened, how we would react to that. Uh, frankly speaking, if compared to other court sentences, I say uh, we, we talk about uh, from three days that Arthur got to seven days that uh, um, Albert got, and we also got some um, 10 days, something like that. Uh, but it's not enough. It, it's not the, the end of story. There are a lot of examples like that, and it's not uh, surprising that this fact of detention beating people, pressuring on civilians play a role in the decision of many to take part in protest. So when people ask, how come, you know, why people go to protest? So, so, why, why, why are you doing some balagan in the city? So there are a number of reasons. These 7,000 and plus many others yeah, who were nearby. On the night of August 10 to 11, a member of Simha community in Minsk, Victoria Gitsovich, was detained. According to her, and I talked to her just two days ago, she was returning home and was among those who were captured by riot police. At that moment, she is awaiting a court decision and is very scared that the punishment may not be like in previous situation of Albert and Arthur. She, she's quite scared that it couldn't be days, it could be more. It's important to note that the accused have not lost their human dignity. When I, when I give you example of these three people, and I also can may give you example of our volunteer in Vichevsk, the place when Mark Chagall was born, so she keeps helping, she's a medical student, she keeps helping as much as she may help, and many, many other examples. So demonstration uh, in Minsk and other places in Belarus are peaceful. People are cleaning up the trash. And I'm sure when you will Google that, you will see that things are happening in, in quite order, if we may call it in that way. And there are those who sing and dance in this demonstration and protest. There's nothing for war. However, the law of mass riot allows to detain a person, even if they are just near. And this fact is perceived by people, as we have seen in uh, recent weeks, not positively. I'm glad to say that uh, Albert is with us tonight, and I'm sure he is somewhere here. He, he told me that he, he will join us. 
uh, unless some problem with connection. Um, I'm, I'm looking for him. I will uh, bring him up when he arrives. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he, he confirmed at least. And again, I had a confirmation form too, but he couldn't do that uh, at that particular time. Yeah. So, um, uh, although, uh, can you imagine that uh, this guy was released just August uh, 14, and we'd, we've done Shabbat, we've done Kabbalah Shabbat, so plenty of con uh, countries, communities, and continents supported us. And after, after we finished Kiddush and blessing over Hala, so we've got a news that he was released. It's a, a bit of a miracle, you know, we keep saying Hasidic stories, so have another one, which is less Hasidic, but more realistic. And it, it from August 14. Yeah. And Victoria helping, uh, Victoria apparently, uh, she was also relieved uh, August 14. And in two days, I called her and said, Oi, I remember I'm an organizing committee of Hupai. I, I have to help. So right now, we speak about uh, civil citizen members of community who went through this jail trial period capturing by police. And they bear in mind the have to do a Shabbat preparation, Hupa preparation, so they, they, they care for, well, in, in terms of what, what are your duties as Jewish people, as human beings? Uh, and she truly helped us with Hupa at Beidin. We've done it uh, two days ago. And no matter how hard it was after this days of imprisonment, I talked to all three of them and they are ready, they open to answer questions. If, if sometimes I just ask, okay, if, if there are any questions that you don't want to answer, and I never heard, okay, I don't want to answer that question. So they may just take a pause, they may just find right words to answer, but again, they open to answer and they open to talk and they truly want to, uh, all these things never happen again. And of course, as many as others need our help, our prayer and support, both spiritual, financial, I do need them place like a bait simplak, like a other synagogue to go and to pray and to cry if it's needed, to take part in Kabbalah Shabbat and Bar Mitzvah and Chupa, making sure that we, 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 we do support them. We somehow behind them in terms of spiritual, financial, physical support, you know, simply hug if they need that. It's important not to forget that the internet was cut down throughout the country for two and a half days. And uh, Noah, you asked me about how, how was the life, uh, Rabbi Sergio, no, they, they asked me about how was the life uh, without internet for two and a half days. And uh, as much as it was terrible, uh, and we had to cancel a number of things, and we, we lost, uh, in terms of business, people lost money, uh, communication, worry, not, 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 no, no connection somehow. Uh, the only positive thing that I finish a book, but it's not a book that I, uh, I'm writing, but I finished to read the book that I couldn't finish before. So this is the only, only positive thing I noticed. The rest of things were obviously negative. Uh, and nevertheless, it didn't break communication. What actually happened, we were making phone calls and text each other planning Kabbalah Shabbat on August 14. Uh, which unite people from different continents, as I already mentioned. However, we are planning the next Shabbat of Solidarity. So we didn't stop with one Shabbat. Uh, Shabbat of Solidarity for September 11. I know for many of us, this date is significant. This date speaks. Uh, for September 11, we will be glad to see each of those who are with us who would be interested. Personally, uh, I want to make stress that uh, I'm not a politician. I'm not a detective, I'm not a policeman to give any assessment to what is happening, to op open my mouth and explain you and give you all answers to all the questions that you want. I last one of the uh, detention on August 10, on the front of my uh, do daughters and uh, frightened them greatly. Uh, it was absolutely terrible. 50 meters between us and police officer in the process of detention. And then your two daughters just watch that. Um, we had to explain and calm them down for several days. Some would say, and already experienced that in, in social network, some would say that 
we would better had them interfere and stay at home. Again, coronavirus, it's a tension, city, and so on and so forth. Stay home. It's a good advice, but it's good advice doesn't work. We went to shop to buy vegetables, and everything happened, by the way, back. And it's just 400 something meters from our home. And it's not just central place, or it's, a, it's something like, you know, near some significant places. I'm living in quite peaceful place. Just that, in that place, particularly, one of protesters was killed. And some people brought flowers, and, who, and those who brought flowers, uh, and were, they were gathering in one big crowd, something like that. So the thing happened in that particular time. And I wouldn't say it was a evening time, dangerous time or something. It was a quarter to five. So quarter to five, you go shopping and then you just have to explain to two of your daughters so what actually happened and why this never happened again. And the college of my middle one is just 200 meters from there. It means that she will start September 1st to go through the same route. How would they stop her? You know, education was not stopped. Um, so in my personal level, yes, we as family experience that. And again, with, ex with such experience, I, 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 we, my wife and I, we did find words and I, we try to find right words for community. And we have to move on, no, no other way. There are those in our community who, who supported five different candidates. And that's why uh, a month before that, I said, guys, I'm not going to tell you who is better, who is not. One of candidates visit our synagogue. Another one is my friend. Uh, I gave my word to one candidate and I know a number of you support Alexander Lukashenko. We appreciate any move, anything what you do. And we understand that we are different people. Yes, we, 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 we Jewish people, we we different people, maybe in our political uh, expectation, but not to fight in, in a frame of our Jewish community center. And I'm sure I wasn't only one rabbi who, who did that. I, I met my uh, Chabad colleague and my Litva colleague and I asked him what, what was I were preaching and it was pretty much the same. But my advice was to help after, before election, after election, my advice was to help to those who suffered, both as volunteers and never mind Jewish or Gentile, I absolutely agree that we shouldn't separate. I will never say, okay, Jewish people or reform people go to help the reform people and that way we'll create Tikkun Olam. No way. The only thing I may say, okay, if you're proud of being Jewish, reform, conservative, orthodox, belong to Beit Simcha congregation, congregation to belong to Netzer movement, so please go with that. I'm absolutely proud if you go as a volunteer with a, any t-shirt you, you wear. Yeah, but with no separation was a matter concerned help. Uh, I was asked a number of times whether we're concentrating uh, more on helping reform or helping Jewish or helping this or helping that. No, we never concentrated on that. Again, we were we, we close to those who were jailed three of us and even more who were involved more or less as volunteers, but we, we, did, we didn't segregate. We, we didn't create any artificial separation, which help is most, mostly needed some kind of, yeah. Um, taking part in interface prayer, prayer a couple of days ago, uh, I asked Almighty three things. Uh, before I say that, uh, once I, I noticed a picture of uh, President of World New Progressive Judaism next to uh, to the Pope, and I and published that, and I brought it to our Catholic community, and we talk a lot, and we agreed that we will do a Jewish Catholic dialogue. Then we move on with Jewish Catholic Russian Orthodox because majority of people are Russian Orthodox. A uh, couple of years ago, we involved Muslim community. We involve uh, Lutheran community. We involve uh, other de definition of Christian communities and thinking about more and more people with open heart and with a prayer. So speaking about this interface prayer that was organized in the very heart of city, not far from protesters, not far from governmental place in the very heart of the city, again, not far from my Beit Simcha synagogue, 10 minutes walk somehow, 
I ask Almighty just three things. We, we had some a prayer, a common prayer, and then we had some like a minute of silent prayer, till I shit something like that. Uh, a, to return peace to our city and our country, which is common for everyone. I don't, I don't, don't believe someone will say I want to walk. Um, to give justice in solving difficult issues, and there are difficult issues, and it's worse to talk with them. Yes, be careful again, what to say, what not to say, it's like a still question about. But uh, justice and solving difficult issues is quite important. And to get to opportunity to invite everyone who is with us today and who will watch it uh, after, later, to 10th anniversary of the Sandra Brislauer Beit Simcha Center in May, June, 2021. So coming from past to present and to future, yeah, with a wonderful world peace. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, may I ask a few questions, if there's a few follow-up questions? Yeah, please. Uh, can you tell us what's going on uh, in the last few days and today, are, are the protests continuing? Are they going stronger? Are they dwindling? And how? what's the situation right now? Uh, on a Sunday, um, we had a protest in Minsk and other cities. Uh, the two different pieces of information. On official level, they talk about uh, 20,000. And on official level, they talk about 200,000. Uh, I didn't count them, honestly. The only thing we, we had to do, we just moved uh, Hupa from a Sunday that we planned to late after Abdullah and Saturday. So to call to all guests who were offline, 30 and then 70 online, all this uh, uh, administration took us one, one day because we, we realized that in, in Wednesday they will have this protest. So everything may happen. And even our Brighton room said, we, we may think to take part in this protest. So do we, we don't want to run there after Hupa. So we, we move Hupa some, some hours ahead. Yeah. So uh, we had this uh, peaceful protest. I, I keep saying it peaceful because watching TV uh, and uh, talking to people, I, I didn't see any kind of uh, ideas of provo provoke any police officer to do something bad. And again, I'm not a politician, I'm not detective to, to be expert in this suggestion. Uh, uh, another thing that is worrying for me that uh, right now our Minister of Education in Belarus uh, got a uh, suggestion from a president that we, we have to think about who is teaching in school. So who, what is ideology, what is ideas of teachers in the school? I hope it was just as a theoretical, because if it would be practical, uh, it would be a bit difficult to detect people what do they think, what ideology they birth. If you teach math, you teach math, you know, nothing to do with ideology. Uh, again, it, it's happening when you, you send your kids to school and you want them to success, to let live in Hebrew, to, to be successful. And I don't want any, any extra, some kind of uh, uh, teacher test or, you know, my kids test in terms of, you know, before they pass it, before they move on to, to other grades, to other classes, to go through that. Um, and can you uh, both give us the kind of the major differences in the political map between uh, Lukashenko and um, his opponent, uh, help me with the name, I'm sorry. Sikhanovskaya. Uh, and, and what are the protesters, are there clear demands that the protesters are making? Um, and what are they? Uh, when we speak about, I, I, I gave my personal reasons. The protesters start with the fact that 10% for Svetlana Tikhanovsky, the sole name of, of, of her, 10% uh, was not enough. According to their independent uh, counting, they will disagree with that. And what that possibly was one of the reasons, if not a major reason, for them to start this protest. Uh, I wouldn't say someone is organizing people or someone is coordinating people. The only question that I may raise is that they, uh, most of them bear a flag, or, which is not official flag, but it's a white, uh, red, white. Well, personally, I didn't vote for this flag yet. Uh, 
but again, a uh, number of my congregants, number of people from, from Beit Simcha, they, they do love that, they consider it as a flag closer to them than an official one. And uh, uh, okay, may, may they feel like that. And uh, from um, other side, those who support Alexander Lukashenko, and just to give you more clear picture, among them is my mom. <laughs> uh, uh, they uh, bring official flag. Uh, uh, right now in Beit Simcha, making sure we're not a part of conflict, we don't bring neither of these flags. We in the middle. We've got a flag of World Union Progressive Judaism. <laughs> Good solution. <laughs> yeah, it's a flag that we put in uh, ten years ago and stays there <laughs> in our Beit Simcha <laughs> centers. Uh, so. Uh, ask, asking my mom, so it's a, in, in, in one family, asking my mom why, why she supported uh, this time Lukashenko and she also supported him previous time. She explained me her agenda, stability, and as a pensioner, she, she see what he's been doing and why people against, why for. So she, she explained it clear and also ask a number of people why they, why they support. And uh, again, we talk about 80%, officially we talk about 80% supporting him. And in street, we also have seen a good number of people who did support him. And the major problem right here is that, uh, again, uh, expecting people more than 10%. And for many people, it was so obvious because a campaign of uh, Svetlana Tsikhanovska was not a campaign of one single uh, female, not even politic, because her uh, husband in jail it, at the very beginning, it was her husband who was planning to be candidate. Then he was a jail. Then another candidate, and he was a jail. And she repre she's representing of people who were detained, who are now in jail. So she's representing a certain uh, questions. So why? Yeah, and no, no much answer. So she didn't bring some kind of war. Or some people say so she she came from Poland, and right now she's in Slovenia. She doesn't understand how factories would work. Yeah, it's another question. And again, in, in uh, her speech, she said, because I'm not planning to be like your, your president. I, I, what do I want? I want just a right counting, right counting. And then we will see what can we do with that. It's not even re-election is considered some kind of, but right counting would be enough. So, Rabbi Grisha, can you maybe zoom out a little bit for, for those of us on the program who don't know, tell us a little bit about the Jewish community in Belarus. How big is it? Do they have a, a public presence as Jews in the community? What can you tell us about it? Ah, uh, sure. Uh, in, in numbers, we talk about uh, every rabbi, every rabbi. I've been spending 70 years as a rabbi and 25 years as Jewish leader in this country. I was born a fifth, fifth generation in Minsk. Uh, uh, so every rabbi who tried to uh, number, to give a number of Jewish people this number sooner or later would be wrong. So I will give you right wrong number of Jewish people uh, and with a bit of tricky way, safe way, pardon me, it's between 20,000 and 40,000. Uh, different, different organizations count differently. Uh, in, in our reform movement, our counting is quite clear. If uh, people are given choice, either they pay membership, it's relatively small, small membership, or they give voluntary hours. And sometimes it's worth to get it as well. If they may not afford some pensioners or students, yeah. So we count people in what they do. And some organizations then count people in whether they attend program, not attend program. But uh, somehow giving the number between 20,000 and 40,000, again, we speak about bigger number than in nearby Lithuania and Poland. I'm sure you all know Poland more or you're more familiar with the Poland and Belarus, even from geographical point of view. But when we speak about Poland, we speak about five, six, seven thousand. When we speak about Belarus, it's obviously over twenty thousand. Uh, in, in terms of uh, denomination, in terms of uh, who we are, so we, we've got Chabad, we've got Litvax, we've got Reform, we've got Secular. Uh, just preventing your question of whether we're friendly or not, uh, I'm don't believe in a friendship that is contracted by, uh, let's say, some kind of, we have to be friendly because other people want us to be friendly. No, I don't believe in that. I believe in project that put it clear that I'm okay 
together with Orthodox rabbi to discuss Holo history of Holocaust project or to discuss uh, Jewish day in Minsk, presentation of Jewish culture uh, in Minsk, when we'll not argue for a number of reasons, I will do things together as a meta concern project. Each of us will bring their agenda, what, they, what we want, what we don't. And then we will do things together and doing this together, we just enrich the program, enrich project and help community in large. And specifically over the last few weeks, what has the impact been on the congregation or the Jewish community overall from all the protests? Uh, different impacts. Uh, some people uh, keep asking what would be pr prayer beyond what we've got in liturgy, Shalom Rav, that we keep saying a prayer for peace and any other, what, what would be prayer for peace? Some people ask uh, like a new halacha questions in invert and common. What, what shall we say before we go to protest, not to be jailed, <laughs> with the hope not to be jailed. Some people say, what, what shall we say for our kids not to go to protest because we, we as parents worry about that. Uh, my wife involved in uh, working with the moms of those who were jailed, who, who, who were protesters, and the most difficult job I think right now. Because when we talk about kids, yes, it's difficult. Yes, it's breaking hard but when you to when you hear a, a mom's voice and a mom's tears uh, and uh, it, it's uh, unbearable you know i don't know how she's doing it so pe people uh, try to grab in in a in a liturgy something they they need and again uh we were gathered by israel embassy uh, last last week we were gathered to talk about uh not just issue of pre and after election, but coronavirus. Not to forget, when we speak about coronavirus, uh, at that moment, we, we all suffer. At, at that moment, this is a common place for us. We, we can talk. But uh, speaking about coronavirus, not to forget that many people, 100,000, were in the street. Some of them put masks, some of them didn't put masks, some of them consider masks as something to stop uh, this coronavirus. Some simply laugh and, uh, and again, in, in our synagogue, I, I suggest people to put masks unless they want some uh, bar mitzvah or chupa pictures uh, without that because it would be for, for ages. And, and again, uh, I, 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 it's quite, quite difficult uh, right now to people to say, okay, we, we, we just take 30 or we just take 20 and the rest of people will say no. Well, I'm sorry about that. It's one thing, uh, what, what may unite community I, I believe that we will understand what project and in terms of uh, social justice and involuntary work we can do together. We, we do have a specific unit of volunteers and I'm glad that a previous coordinator, coordinator of that was a, a girl from our movement. I'm particularly proud of that. Uh, well, Possibly we can do more as different communities and different union in terms of helping uh, our volunteers to help others. If I can add something from my uh, position, I can see that uh, not just only the Belarus community became more connected all together during the services and supporting by calling families and checking what's going on with each one of them, but also all other FSU region, the Ukraine and the Russia, are really caring about the community members, the specific families, their friends, in, if we are talking about Nasser people, for example, because Nasser Tamar people, because Artur and uh, uh, Albert and Drafik, all of them are part of their Nasser family also. So uh, I think the support that we have uh, from uh, other different countries, not just on the FSU countries, but all other different areas of young adult support uh, for those specific members are really, really touching and giving a feeling of global family caring about all of us. Thank you.
So that feels like a, a good segue to, we've got people from around the world who are on the Zoom. Everyone wants to know what can we do? So I'll, I'd love to hear Rabbi Sergio from you as well, Rabbi Grisha, Rita, what can we do? You mentioned the Shabbat of Solidarity. What is that and what else? Oh, and we see on the screen now just uh, information about the, the Solidarity Shabbat on yeah. September 11th. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I just I just uh, put the uh, Solidarity Shabbat info um, on the share screen so that everybody can see. We will also send it uh, in a follow up to um, to this uh, to this call to this uh, webinar. Go ahead, so Disha. Can you tell us how we can be supportive of uh, uh, of the community and of the of your members? Uh, you, you ask me, or, or you, you we we start with Rabbi, uh, Vice President of Volume for the Judaism. Disha, no Robert. problem. Here, this is this is one of I think that the COVID crisis, the pandemic around the world, bring us a. a a, a huge opportunity. That means the the way that we can be together to be close because we we can we can travel, we can be personally. But it's so important to use the technology and to say here we are. And the the, the time of Shabbat is on the main mainful to be together. Not only to pray and the joy of Shabbat. We are confident that Shabbat it's the powerful energy to give to our community in Belarus as with Grisha and all the people on the field, what we are praying and we are learning and we are keeping our Jewish roots to, in the new context, to give a, a new meaning. That means when we are praying and when we are remembering that we are creating, that we are human beings, that we are free people, because we go out from Egypt. And then every week we do that. But right now we need to be free people on Belarus. That we need to pray to have this freedom to defend the human rights. That Tikkun Olam is not only something that we are reading. It's really concrete action on the and to belong to this extended family. The meaning is that for good things, for sure, we are together, but also we, we have challenge and crisis and we need to face these kind of uh, situations give us the strength. Along generations, we have our people together in Shabbat, getting the energy and also the strength to go forward. And for us is the way that we, we can be together. That means with Grisha's community, the Belarus, people that feel that they are not alone, that they are not isolated. And with the technology, we are building a common house. And the Beit Knesset is the place that we are together. The Beit Filah is the place that we raise our prayers. The Beit Midrash is the place that we can learn from our texts and our roots. But this is a Beit Ham that means the house of the people. Not only our people, because this track is not only a Jewish agenda. This is a human universal agenda as is part of the vision of our prophets, the prophet of Israel. And then like we struggle in Israel to have a, a, equality and to have our dignity and to be proud to be progressive Jews in every place in the world. And right now on Minsk and Belarus, we invite of all of our people to be together and to share not only the speakers and the key persons, is to be part of the community. And uh, I am um, uh, now sending in the chat box, and we will also send that in the follow-up email, uh, ways to donate to the congregation in Belarus uh, so that they can continue to offer such important services that they do for the community that is in such great need right now. So please uh, follow the link and, and learn more in the uh, and give as much as you can. Um, I'm going to take some questions uh, that are uh, uh, 
participants asked. So there was a question from um, David, David Simon, who asked, uh, Belarus is located between Russia and the EU. And where do you think that the people of Belarus want to be? Do they want to be more like the EU or do they want to be more like Russia? And is there a specific way that the Jewish community is leaning in that, on that question? Uh, it's a very good question. And uh, my wife, she was born in Russian Federation. I studied in Leoberg College in, in London. It used to be EU. <laughs> and I visit a number of EU congregations. It's quite close to, to our family. In terms of a uh, question, whether we want to be more EU or more Russia, uh, there are different opinions. There are obviously people who look at EU and consider that would be a better way for us. There are people who look at Russia and say there are better uh, way for us. Uh, both of them right and both of them wrong. I think Belarus should create their own way and be uh, individual in the fact that uh, we, we can uh, find our own way, which is in between. And, uh, and uh, find our own way in between can be Belarusian, not even Ukrainian way, but Belarusian way. If we will find golden mean and dialogue between two different uh, sides, uh, I do believe in that. I, I'm not sure when it will happen. Because again, we will got now two questions. So one would be full peace in Israel, yeah, people in dialogue, and one will two sides or in Belarus, those who look at you, UAE, those who look at Russia, and some of them look at other uh, country, how they would find dialogue, how they would find golden mean. Uh, but I, I prefer to believe in that from uh, strength that I've got from my congregants, interface dialogue, from uh, my family, from our community, and all around the world, we will, we will, we will do what we, we can do. Thank you. Um, um, many questions are revolving around anti-Semitism in Belarus today, and maybe you can also give us background on that. Is there anti-Semitism in Belarus? Is there more anti-Semitism in Belarus now? Is it connected to the protests at all? Uh, I understand there's anti-Semitism even in the country when they never ex when never had the Jews. You know, when you have to blame someone, uh, you will have Jewish people in the list anyways. Blame once and blame a couple of times. But again, looking at the jokes, part of that is true. In terms of Belarus, uh, to compare that, and I'm saying it from Hulha because I, I took some time to research uh, anti-Semitism in countries nearby in Belarus, uh, history of anti-Semitism. I was planning even to talk about that in World University Conference in Switzerland, should it take place in May, but it was postponed for a number of years. And I also uh, delivered a lecture in a German uh, uh, culture center in Minsk, when we also hold our interface dialogue for anti-Semitism. So m m my idea is that uh, it's not anti-Semitism is issue, but how people, how government, how people who can protect that, how do they react on that? And I've seen reaction on a swastika and a number of Jewish memorials, how quick it was withdrawn, negotiation again didn't bring any, any particular guilty people, and uh, I know uh, I noticed some question about what's going on, uh, not just in Minsk, but we had uh, such situation in uh, Mogilov, uh, which is uh, two hours drive from Minsk. And they just put a, a collar on a monument and they were taken by police eventually. And who came to the court to say good words to support them? Jewish people who said, let us just try to search carefully. Maybe there were the kids who were brainwashed, but somehow, so for me, it's a good sign. How could it be anti-Semitism in the country when Jewish people who suffer from their memorial, that they collected money themselves, their memorial in the heart of Magilov was, viol was violated with the color, with swastik, whatever, and they came to the court to speak for, to stand for those who violate this law. So uh, it's one thing, and a second thing in, in Minsk, I remember how they also put uh, this anti semitic they put swastika, it took place some 13 years ago, some, uh, in one of our major memorials. 
Uh, in a couple of hours, uh, Russian Orthodox and Catholic community called to a number of Jewish leaders said, if you want the guards from us, so we also would be happy to, to see any camera, to, to, to follow anything, any support you want. And, and again, we talk about the memorial of Jewish people, not Russian, not, not Catholic, but they understood this memorial of Second World War and we all share the same history. So uh, I'm to a certain extent proud of my country from people to you, to government, let, let be honest, uh, how they reacted and any evidence of that. Even uh, the fact that when a uh, window in a uh, Chabad synagogue was broken in Babrusk, we, we all called uh, to our chair, to Chabad rabbi, giving our words of support. Never mind, you're absolutely secular, secular you reform, you anti-Chabad, you Litvak, or whoever. So broken window in the synagogue was enough for us to, to give a call to support and ask whether we can help. So for me, this is a big this is a big reason to say that it's not anti-Semitism is a major reason, but how, how do we look at that and how do we fight that? So Rabbi Grisha, we had a few questions about uh, the rate of Aliyah being made from Jews in Belarus to Israel. Can you speak about that? Is it changing, growing, shrinking? Uh, uh, it's not shrinking, I think. Uh, you remember when uh, uh, Margarita Fruman she mentioned about support from Israel of those who, for even former uh, NATO <coughs> leaders, <coughs> we had the support from different places in Jerusalem. So they, they uh, in previous years, they were leaders of Jewish communities, and now they're in Israel. And well, we bit like a feel sorry that we lost them in Belarus, but we didn't lose them in Israel. They keep going as Jewish people and, and enrich with all their talents the, the land of Israel. Uh, I understand um, uh, in terms of counting whether it's enriched or not, uh, it, it's not shrinking uh, anyway, but I, I wouldn't say certainly it's increasing somehow, but those who wanted to make Aliyah, they still in plan to make Aliyah. Those who consider make Aliyah, it may be that any kind of uh, protest, any kind of election is a big motivator for Jewish people to go to Israel. It can be in Belarus, in France, everywhere, yeah. So in, in our task, and uh, we talk with the president and uh, with leaders of World Union Police of Judaism, and now uh, I'm, I'm turning to you, the Iraq people, uh, uh, leaders, uh, in, in our task, uh, for those who are thinking about Aliyah, to give them again uh, opportunity in our synagogue, to give them program, to give them explanation, together with Jaffe, together with any, any Zionist organization, to help them to understand what is Israel. Yes, they can uh, download it in, in, in internet, but you, it can be prepared starting uh, from Hebrew and finishing with which synagogue you will go there or what, what, what to do when you, when you came back, when you came to, to your land, to, to Israel. So we also can be a good, uh, good institute as helping with the preparation. Thank you so much. Um, I think we have covered most of the questions uh, and this has been such a fascinating time. Uh, Grisha, may we offer you a blessing? Sure, please do. So I know that everybody is, we're not seeing everybody, but uh, I'm sure everybody's praying with me. We pray for the people of Belos. May God give you strength and perseverance as uh, you are fighting for democracy and such a dangerous and, and scary and uncertain times. Uh, may the one who blessed our ancestors, bless uh, Congregation of Betsimcha and bless you, Rabbi Abramovich. May God keep you safe and healthy. May you be supported by each other and by us, and may you feel our love and our uh, solidarity with you. Um, and may we all uh, find ways to help you and be involved and support you during this time. Thank you so much for everything that you do. And uh, thank you, Rabbi Sergio, and thank you, Rita, and thank you, Barbara, for um, uh, hosting this uh, panel. As I said, we will follow up uh, both with action items of how you can help the community in, uh, in Minsk and uh, information on the follow-up uh, on the um, Solidarity Shabbat uh, and other options to help. Thank you all for participating. Thank, thank you, Noah.
Thank you. Thank you, Noah. Thank you so much for staying together, for offering help. Uh, I remember some seven years ago, we supported Israel in difficult times. Then later on, Ukraine. Then even uh, months ago, states. And I, I was always in positions that we, Belarusians, support someone with a prayer, with thinking, with whatever we can do. And right now, I understand.